We are rapidly approaching our first major milestone of information theory, the source coding theorem. And one result that we'll need for the theorem is to get an expression for this entropy right here, for the entropy of the joint distribution of these IID random variables. So in this video, we're gonna do that calculation. So let's do that. So what is P to the K? P to the K is this joint distribution on X1 to K, which just factors as PX1 up to PK because they are independent. And in fact, each of these P's, these, these, these PMFs is the same because they are identically distributed. Now I claim that the joint, the entropy of this joint distribution, P to the K, equals k times the entropy of the individual distributions. So this is a theorem, and we will prove this. So this is a very nice little handy little formula, and it starts, it starts to give us an inkling of, of all the nice properties that entropy has. Entropy is a very well-behaved mathematical expression, and this is our first sort of indication of that. So what's the proof of this? So let's do it. It's a straightforward calculation. Entropy of P to the K. Well, let's just plug in the definition. The definition is it's the sum over all the elements. And in this case, the elements are these sequences, X1 to K, times the probability of that element. This is just, just the same definition. It's just using slightly different notation since we have sequences now same definition as in the single source symbol case. One over the probability. Now we know that that these probabilities factor in this way so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and use that. Let's use it for this one here. So what is this guy? Well we can plug in we can plug in that factorization one over I'll drop the B for now just to so I don't have to keep writing B that factors, and of course the log of the products, uh, log of a product is the sum of the logs. I from one to K log one over P X I. Very good. And now let's, let's go ahead and, and plug this in here. And let's go ahead and while, while we're at it, let's maybe just go ahead and and, and move this sum out. So we're gonna have a sum here. Let's, let's go ahead and, and move that sum all the way out to the outside. So we'll have PK X1 to K log, oh yeah, log one over P of X I. Now, what can we do inside here? We move that sum out, so let's do something with this inner sum now. Well, what is this inner sum? This is just the sum, so I'm using that, 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 that notation for summing over all sequences. And that's just the same thing as if we were to sum over each of those elements. Maybe I'll, I'll write out what each of them is. For every x1 in x, every x2 in x, up to every xk in x. So that's that's just exactly the same thing. And so we have these all of these nested sums. And let's go ahead and 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 pull this guy, this p log 1 over p of xi. That doesn't depend on since it only depends on xi. It doesn't depend on any of the other x's. So we can go ahead and pull that one out. So let's do that. Let's pull out Maybe I'll switch colors here. Let's pull out, so we have the sum over i, log, oh, we have to keep the sum over xi, log one over pxi, and now we have pulled out, so this is maybe just to be perfectly clear here. Now we have inside, we have the sum over all of the other x's, so we have the sum over all xj's where j is not equal to i of pk 
x1 to k. So by this, this, I, of course, I just mean, you know, the sum, this is the sum over x, well, whatever it is, x1 up to, I mean, if it wouldn't include x1, but that would up to xi minus 1, xi plus 1. So we sum over everything except for xi. Okay. And now what is this thing inside here? Well, we're summing over all the possible values of, of xj for all the j's other than i. And that's just, that's just the marginal distribution of xi, right? We're summing this thing over all the possible values of all the other variables except for xi. So that just leaves us with p of xi. So this right here, this is equal to p of xi. That's it. So now, what do we have? By the way, there's another, maybe I should make, that's not, that's not log of that times that, that's, this is the log times this. So what do we have? We just plug in that, we have the sum over i from one to k, the sum over xi's, so this is xi in x, p of xi, I'll, I'll move this one over to the left log 1 over p of xi and now we can see the result we can see it because this is this here the sum over xi is p of xi log 1 over p of xi is of course we recognize that is just the entropy so we have the sum over i from 1 to k the entropy of p right it's the entropy of P. And this, of course, doesn't depend on I. So we get K times the entropy of P. And we have got it. We have got it. And of course, you know, this is the base B. I dropped all the Bs, but you know that, I'm sure. So we have proved the result that the entropy of a joint distribution of IID random variables is k if it's k iid random variables it's k times the entropy of the individual variables or the 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 individual marginal distributions so that proves the result so we write our nice little qed and we will use this next in in the the source coding theorem now maybe just to mention more generally so here we have them iid more generally it turns out that the entropy of the joint distribution of independent variables not necessarily identically distributed is the sum of the entropies of the individual marginal distributions so that's a slight generalization of this it's the proof is basically exactly the same